Hey coaches, welcome back for our, the next edition, next episode in the middle school air raid series. Uh, today we're going over three drop back game plays that I chose for my air raid offense. Uh, we'll get into the concepts and a little bit of chalk and then we'll get into the plays and cut ups of the ones that I do have to show. Um, if you haven't, real quick reminder to uh, connect with us, especially on YouTube. Subscribe, tell a friend. Let's make sure all of these youth coaches know that they can run the spread. Give them that option. Um, we really want to have all coaches of all disciplines, defense, run game, whatever the case may be, get on these weekly or biweekly coaches roundtables. So please register for that. Okay, so here we are. Like I said, just about halfway through the uh, the program. Um, we're doing drop back game plays. So last week. Uh, we chose our quick game plays. I did four vert, stick, and corner. Hopefully you have an idea of what you want to run now. Today we're going to do drop back. So last year, shallow was our most most run drop back game uh, play. Um, and we're going to continue to run that. have a few wrinkles we want to try this year. I'll get into that with you. Um, mesh, we did practice it all year. Um, but... Uh, I was kind of psyched myself out of running it for the first half of the season. I just kept hearing how hard it was to get right and not sure if it was worth it, wasting it in the game. If it wasn't right, uh, I wish I had done it earlier because when we started running it, actually, it was awesome. It's a great play. Wish I ran it earlier. And then this year, we're going to add cross. Uh, I'm confident now that I can coach it, that I can teach it, and that we can execute it. So we're going to add cross this year. So the biggest thing I want to talk about before we get into the plays, guys, is the differences between a quick game concept and a drop back concept, okay? So quick game, um, in the quick game, we come up to the line of scrimmage and we look for easy money for open, for open receivers that aren't being covered seven yards uh, or closer, okay? And we're going to take all the free yards for, drop, for a quick game. For a drop back game, that is off. We are calling these plays for a very specific reason, likely, you know, third and long or a place on the field like the red zone. We want to run a certain play or we see a defend, defender or a defense we want to attack. When we call a drop back game pass, shallow um, cross or, or, um, or mesh, we want them to run the play. So the quarterback is not going to come up and look for easy money. We're just going to run the play. And so um, that is one of the bigger differences. And also the, the second biggest difference uh, as opposed to quick game, which is a one step out of the shotgun uh, drop for a quarterback. And this is a three step from the shotgun quarterback drop and a five step from under center. Okay. So it is definitely uh, a longer drop. It takes a little bit longer because these receivers are crossing quite a bit um, and they, we just need to have the time. So, with O-line blocking the way it is in general, but especially at the youth levels, um, we don't call drop back game maybe 20% of the time, 30% of the time. Uh, we call quick game about 70% of the time because we can get the ball out quicker. Um, but these plays are deadly. Uh, if you can get the time, I definitely would, would run these plays as much as, as much as your team can handle it. Um, but anyway, so let's get into it. F shallow is what you see on the screen. Open, F shallow. Uh, which means that F is doing the shallow, as it's called, obviously. And the main coaching point for our shallow runners, whether it's F running the shallow or Y running the shallow, we'll flip it here in a second, is that they need to be so close to the defensive linemen that they can slap them on the back of their head or the back of their jersey on the way by. We joke with our receivers about that, but it's the truth. We want them to be so close to the defensive line uh, that, that they can literally hit them on the way by and then they can pop out here on the other side uh, ready to go at the right angle up the field okay so f is running the shallow y is running an outside release dig okay this is how they run at the higher levels high school college and pros they run a dig across and they kind of look for a window to, to stop in if they can okay um, we started doing that last year it did not work out that well. So once we changed it to, for him to automatically sit in this first window, um, our, our completion percentage went way up. So we, by rule, 
are going to have this dig sit in the first window between the SAM and the mic every time, and it works out well for us that way. This play is happening a little bit quicker than, than you might think. So usually it's coming out to F or to the, to the Y. And the way we decide and the way we read this play, guys, is the quarterback takes the snap, takes his drop, and he's looking for color, either out here or color in here. If this color stays here or goes back with the Y, who's running right at him on the outside shoulder, if this guy goes with the Y, that means his F will pop wide open for the shallow underneath. So if there's color here, that means there's no color out here, and he's hitting the F. If the color comes out with the F or just pops out because his job is to cover the flats on this defense, whatever they're in, then that tells us that there is going to be a pocket, some open grass in between Mike and Sam, and he should be able to hit the Y. Um, if for whatever reason both of those are just uncomfortable for the quarterback or just doesn't feel right, his T is swinging, um, and he will be wide open by the time the quarterback gets to him. We also give the T the ability to have a ball call. This is one of the only plays we let them yell at the quarterback, hey, ball, 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 uh, because it, by the time he looks here, looks here, uh, these linebackers have, have followed his eyes, followed his body language way out here. So this guy will be all alone. So at, at any point, the T can just call for the ball. He just better not be wrong <laughs> is, the bigger, is the bigger point, okay? So that's really the game on, on shallow, F shallow in particular. Now, these outside receivers, uh, I've said it a million times. I'm going to say it probably a million more times. Uh, your receiver coach or you as the offense coordinator need to be on constant contact with these guys because we want to take shots, okay? And this R is a built-in shot because when he's running his post, he needs to be spying the safety. And once he sees the safety cheating down for this dig, um, we, we will call this shot uh, F shallow R post. And basically it'll just tell the quarterback to throw the post. And if, if, he, if he throws a pick or something bad happens, it's on me as a coach. Um, but we want this R to tell us what the, S, what the safety is doing. And he needs to be conscious of that. L, same thing. If this quarterback corner is lazy or just not on his horse or you can get past him, Tell us, and we'll call a shot play for you. Okay, so that's F shallow. We flip it to the other side. Now we're an ace because we want this Y to narrow down to get across. That's a point that I forgot. We also want this F to narrow down to cheat in, if you will, so he can get across faster. Um, we'll talk a little bit in a second here about um, some issues we had of that F getting all the way across or the Y getting all the way across. So the more they can cheat down, the better. So we call this Y shallow, which means the F is now running the dig, outside release dig on this will. Uh, again, it's read the same way. We're reading grass, right? The quarterback takes his three-step drop out of shotgun, and he's reading. Is there color here in the hook to curl? If so, we're going to throw this flats. If, if the color goes out to the flats, then we're going to throw this, uh, this dig, this little hunt route, okay? And again, worst case scenario, you've always got the T swinging opposite of the shallow. We do not want the T to bring anybody to this shallow party. He is always opposite by rule. Always opposite of the shallow by rule, okay? So when we run it out of three by one, technically the play is called drive. It's the same exact play, um, but again, it's a nice little natural rub route. Uh, the Y is running the shallow. We're gonna cheat them down a little bit so the Y can get across. F is running the outside release dig on Sam here. Um, it's a nice natural rub route if they get into, you know, pressing or trying to trying to come up. And then T opposite of the Y, T is running the swing opposite of the shallow. Okay. And again, same read. We're reading grass. If this outside linebacker sits up here, then the grass is open over here. If color flashes out in this grass, then the grass will be moving back over here. So we'll go Y to F to T again. And again, we are looking to take shots every chance we get. Okay. And then last look, one thing that we did, because the F was having a hard time getting all the way from here, all the way across with our linemen holding up, um, that we went two back, had an extra blocker here, but this F starting here and coming through the line, I'll show you on film, found it a little bit easier to get through and pop out the other side. But it's the same, it's F to Y, um, and, and we really wanna read where the open grass is for that, okay? 
So let's get into some film on shallow. That's something that we do have film on. So this first one is ace. So he's attached F, I'm sorry, Y shallow. So he's running the shallow, which means this gentleman here is running the dig outside releasing on him. And so this is the player that will tell us if, he, if he's out here, um, then the shallow is off and the dig is on. If he, if he stays here, then we got the shallow, okay? So here it is, he presses up, that linebacker backs up completely. That was third and five, and now it is first and 10 because we got a seven yard shallow. Okay, here we are, open, open, F shallow, running on the heels all the way across. It's outside release, dig. Okay, so really what we really need to do as a quarterback when we come out, we're looking, we want to know what this grass looks like immediately, okay? So right now, this is the player that can affect that. So depending on what he does will be a great indicator on which will be open. So here we go. Open, F shallow. The quarterback has a little pressure, rolls out, rolls to the way of the shallow, by the way, knowing he's going to be dragging across. And it's a touchdown. All right, here we go. Here's what we were talking about. Here we go, green. Here's our two back set. Took a little bit, a little bit of an easier path to get through here on the shallow here. This is an outside release dig. Now this is the defender that he needs to be outside releasing. This is a safety. So um, really this guy's making it easy. This is the overhang defender and really is the only guy that can affect um, the grass out here. So pre-snap, the way that it looks, as long as he doesn't fly out here to the grass, the shallow should pop open and he blitzes. So the, as, as soon as he comes, you know that there is space. And again, I'll say it a million times, the point of this offense, five yard pass, get to the, the ball to your playmakers in space. Um, you just, you, you can't do it any easier than that. Okay, here we go again. We got green, but attached tight end. So he needs an outside release on him and then find some, find the, uh, Find some open grass here. This is an F shallow, and it's a post behind. All right, so that was a nice, nice patience by the tight end and the quarterback letting, letting him clear because this guy, these linebackers are flowing with the F. So he has to let that clear before he hits that dig behind. Very patient, great job O-line, just enough time to find that dig and get into the end zone. Okay, here we go again, uh, out of the two back, F shallow, F didn't get through there fast enough, but the, but the dig found its way home. Now, he needs to do a better job. This is his outside linebacker. He needs to outside release him and then come across. If he did it right, this guy would have turned a little bit more and his hips would have been out of place. Um, he is in a good situation here. He just doesn't react fast enough. Uh, but credit the quarterback for zipping it in there and, and, the, and the tight end to be ready uh, to go. But we can get better there. Definitely need to get better there. Okay, last shallow here that we'll talk about. So this is open. Y shallow. Outside release dig. And we'll play the game. We think the quarterback could have waited a little bit longer. But anyway, the F does a great job of catching the ball, even though there was somebody on him. And getting upfield was one of the main points that we tell these receivers. Just get straight upfield. You're going to get your five yards. All right, cool. So that is shallow. Um, let's move on to the next drop back game play and it's mesh and it's kind of a right handed play. I mentioned we didn't run it so late and I wish we did, um, but it's kind of a right handed play. We only really run it to the right when we run it because of the rules that happen, uh, rules with the mesh. Um, we'll get into that specifically um, in, in just a second, but we really only run it to the right, to the right. We run it out of ace. We run it out of open, which just basically takes the, the Y out a little bit deeper. And then we'll run it from, uh, from early. 
um, and then we'll do two back. But essentially what we're doing here, the rules and the progression goes like this. So 80% of the time when you run this play, um, this, this R is getting the ball. And it is an eight yard speed out, okay? I grew up in the Jerry Rice era in San Francisco and his routes were so crisp and he would come to a 90 degree angle and break it off and people would say how great his route running is and I believe it and still believe it. Uh, but things have changed a little bit. We run speed outs uh, because we want the speed to continue, the momentum to continue. So at about six to seven yards, he'll start to take kind of diagonal steps. And then by the third step here, he is aimed directly at the sideline, ready to catch the ball. Okay. 80% of the time, this is what's going to happen. It's really almost impossible for a youth cornerback to cover this, to cover this simple route. I don't know what it is, but it's, it really is. I'll show you some film on it. Um, so basically, unless this cornerback has leverage pre-snap or is just bailing out, flying out there for whatever reason, uh, the ball is going to go out here. Uh, the second read in the, in, in the mesh is the T. So for whatever reason, this guy bails out or just sitting out here, we are going to just turn and throw to the T on his swing or arrow route, however you want to do it. Um, and then the third read, if this linebacker starts to, to bail out to get to the flats, is this um, F behind him. Uh, in, in the older levels, high school and college, uh, they read the mesh as one group and uh, kind of read the middle linebacker wherever he is less likely to be. They'll throw to the other guy. Um, but for us at this level, we want to just go R to T to F. Uh, because this guy will either be getting pulled this way or pulled this way, and we're going to throw it either way and continue to play games with that outside linebacker, okay? So a couple of rules that we want to talk about when it comes to mesh. Um, why is always setting the mesh from his position? And when we talk about setting the mesh, that is no deeper than five yards uh, where he's running his shallow, okay? He can go three, four, or five yards. Uh, air raid certification uh, at the older levels is six yards. We want to do it at five for the youth levels. Um, but the Y is always on top. And Y in F or Y in whoever he's meshing with, they're always going to slap hands with their left hand. And if you can get that rule into their brains, slap with your left hand when you're crossing and they literally need to slap hands as they go by in practice and in the games, they want to be that close to each other. Um, if they always slap with their left hands, they'll always be right, okay? They'll always be correct. So Y is setting the mesh at about five yards. F, his job is to see the Y and adjust to where he is. It's not the Y's job to adjust to F. It is opposite. So they slap hands, and here's the rules. So as these linebackers will be doing in youth football, it is zone 99% of the time, uh, these linebackers will – drop to their zones and as these receivers come across when they see these guys dropping into a zone look it'll be pretty obvious when someone when they're running with someone with man or if they're dropping so when they see these guys dropping out like this in the zone they will slap hands and immediately sit in the first open window they find and settle a noose just like our everyday drill settle nooses we'll get into those everyday drills soon here but literally turn Put your hands up and get ready for the ball. Same thing with Y. As soon as they slap hands, he sees this guy widening and this guy dropping. He's going to sit in the first open window um, and get ready for the ball. Okay. So again, it's R to T to F. Um, and it's really dependent on this guy. Anything, anything but bailing out, we're throwing that out. If he does bail out, then we're really just kind of playing with this guy. We're going to likely throw this T, especially initially to get things going. But as soon as he starts chasing this, we're going to hit this behind. And those are big, big home run shots, guys. Okay. Now, in the off chance that these guys get frisky and they want to run with these guys and man, uh, this play, what makes this play so special is that it automatically converts to, uh, to a man beater, which instead of sitting in the windows, these guys continue on their path and actually go at this angle and go upfield. And when these guys are trailing and these and the quarterback can hit this ball right here with a guy trailing 
and this guy with this guy's man, and it just breaks loose for huge gains. So it's a good thing if they go to man against mesh guys. Um, but typically what you'll see is this zone look, okay? Um, so yeah, so that's mesh, R to T to F, um, and that's out of open. That's what will run it out of most. I've already showed you how things don't change for early. Um, the only thing that changes is now the L is running the mesh, but again, Y sets it. If they always slap hands with their left hands, L now is the one meshing with him, slapping with his left hand and settling in. Um, and now F is the flats defend or the flats uh, recept receiver. But again, nine, eight times out of ten, this out this, this is where the ball is going out, out, out. When he gets leveraged back, then we're playing with F and L. Okay, so that's out of early, and here it is out of our two back set. So again, no one's learning anything new. It all looks the same to us and the quarterback, but it is different um, for the defense. It just looks different, okay? Uh, as I said, I don't have many plays out of mesh. Um, we didn't even run it the same exact way. What I do want to just show you is this out. Uh, we took, we adopted Oklahoma's version last year, which was a mistake for me because I was brand new to the mesh. Um, we're going to go how mummy this year, like I just showed you. Um, so disregard this defender. Um, but basically, his, this is the speed out, and this is a all league safety. Okay, and I'm telling you, even with an all league or all league cornerback, it is hard to defend at eight yards speed out. Um, this is a really good receiver we have, but by no means uh, is he the athlete of this guy that's covering him. And it's just you can get ten yards every single time. I mean, without without question. Here it is going the opposite way up here. Eight yard, eight to 10 yards speed out, fourth and 10, first down. Okay, it's just not defensible. Um, and then you mix in the, the mesh behind it. Uh, here's the only other play that I wanted to show you. This is 30 seconds left in the title game. This is the first game that we saw two high safeties at all. Um, since it's 30 seconds left, they put a third safety in here. Um, so it makes it even harder for us. We're down two points. Uh, but since they had two safeties, we were hitting this out all game about 10 yards. And this guy would sit here, and we were just sitting right behind him and getting 10 yards a pop, 10 yards a pop. Um, so the play before this, we ran it again, and this guy came screaming down, cheating. So we said, hey, let's do out and up and see what happens. Uh, we sent this guy right at this safety to, to get his attention. Um, so this guy would be kind of left one-on-one. -on -one. So this is mesh out and up. Um, lucky enough to hit it to win the NorCal title. Uh, literally, that was the game-winning touchdown. Um, and this is the, the mesher here coming across. That's, that's the L. And so here it is. This is the out breaking up. And this guy has his hips in the wrong direction. And it's pretty much lights out from there. Okay, so again, I really wish we ran mesh earlier in the season. I'm taking the gloves off this year. I'm running it from day one, uh, and it's a it's a play that's going to hit big for us uh, constantly. Okay, all right. So that's mesh, our second drop back game, and then so for the third one is cross. Okay, and traditionally it's been called Y cross. Um, I wanted to add it for a few reasons. Number one, as I've said again and again in the last about mesh uh, this eight to ten yard speed out is deadly and we really only run it to the right mesh to the right so i wanted to be able to call this play and, and get it out here so on the front end of this play the l is running the outside release go really need this cornerback to turn his back so that we can get this eight to ten yard speed out and that is the first read here okay so if this cornerback is bailing we are hitting the speed out as many times as possible, okay? Now the next read is this cross. And so why cross is legendary. It actually started with Lavelle Edwards at BYU. Um, this was his favorite play. Um, but basically the rule is for this why is that he has to go under or in front of the outside linebacker to his side and then behind the Mike linebacker 
and then he's climbing to a point 22 yards on the sideline, okay? And in big boy football, you might have the time to let him climb. They hit this all the time out here. Uh, that is not what we're trying to do here. That's not realistic for us with the O-line play the way it is at youth. It's just tough. Um, so what we're going to do is basically give him two options. If this safety um, drops back and is behind you and you can't get over the top of him, then we are going to sit down uh, in this first window, whether it's here, depending on the mic. Uh, we're going to sit down in the first window, whether it's here whether it's here, you know, whatever, wherever the first window was, we're going to sit it down in that window. Um, now, if this safety, um, which I think he's going to do, I think the safety is going to see this F, um, this nice, huge 10 yard speed out, he's going to get sucked down. And if this safety comes down at all, or if he's even even with him as he's coming across, we're going to let that, that Y go right to the post. And it's almost gonna be like an all verts where if this F is getting, if this guy is aggressively going after this F, we're just gonna hit the Y behind him, okay? And yeah, worst case scenario, we got the T to dump it off to you. So going the other way, um, ooh, that is not. So going the other way, F cross. Now Y is the first choice and he's doing that speed out, of course. We really need this cornerback to turn his back on the, on the outside release go. Um, and then the F is doing the climb to 22. But in, in our world, really, he's either sitting down in front of the safety, if the safety is behind him, or if the safety is cheating down to get to this Y or wants to get stick his nose in down here, we're going to let the F take it to the post and go deep behind him. Okay. So that's my plan for cross. We haven't run it yet, so I don't have any film on it. Um, and then the last thing is just a play action uh, cross, basically play that we're going to do um, backed up in our own goal line. But we'll get into that at some other time. Okay. Anyway, so that's drop back game. Um, we went through shallow mesh, and then our new one is going to be cross this year. So hopefully you got a lot out of our three drop back game plays. Um, hopefully you can start choosing yours. Uh, and you know, I know these three are awesome. And so I'd encourage you to, to look at these and give it a hard look, something that you don't need to reinvent the wheel. These are all plays that were, you know, have been successful for years at every level. Okay. So anyway, thanks again, tell a friend, subscribe to our channels, make sure that we are sharing the love. Obviously I'm not doing this. To, to get rich, I just want to make sure youth football teams know that they can run the spread. And I think that will bring numbers back to our, to our youth football um, tackle fields. Okay. Anyway, so please join us next show when we go over our three screenplays, which I love because it gets, again, <laughs> gets the ball in space to our players and let them go to work. Okay. All right. Great. We'll see you uh, on the next go around. Thanks for joining in and we'll talk to you soon.